Avon Resources Limited is a gold exploration company with significant projects in British Columbia and the Yukon. Trading on the TSX Venture Exchange, symbol ABN, and the OTCQB, symbol ABNAF. Surrounded by world-class gold deposits and mines, Avon's 23,000 hectares Forest Kerr Gold Project is located in the heart of the Golden Triangle in northwestern BC. For more information, visit us at avonresources.com. You're listening to HowStreet.com Radio, available online at TalkDigitalNetwork.com. Welcome to HowStreet.com Radio, the online source for market opinions. Here is Jim Goddard. My guest is Wolf Richter, publisher of WolfStreet.com. He's speaking to us from San Francisco. House of Forest Fire Smoke there today. Hi, thanks for having me back, Jim. Uh, well, the, the wildfires are are crazy we have a whole bunch of new ones uh everything's breaking records uh the smoke is terrible i mean now thank goodness uh it's up high so we don't really have to breathe it that much but because it's up high uh yesterday obviously it darkened the city and turned red and, and today it's still fairly dark and but it's yellow um but uh you know it, it's Above where we breathe the air, so most of most in most places the air is not that terrible, uh, but the fires are just catastrophic and it's just horrible. And it's we're not anywhere near the end of the fire season. You know, we will have to wait until the first big rain comes before all this kind of uh, comes to an end. Until which may happen in October, November. So this is going to drag out for a while. Wolf, have the massive stimulus programs in the U.S. worked in stimulating the economy? Yes, they have. <laughs> and even, you know, when you, uh, when you have a lot of, uh, fraud going on in some of these things, you know, the money still gets spent. So, uh, uh, yeah, it has stimulated the economy in some, in some places. Uh, for example, in, uh, retail sales, uh, with new records. Uh, since the stimulus programs uh, went out, despite uh, 89 million people on unemployment compensation, uh, we've had uh, booming retail sales, uh, especially online. You know, so online had a, uh, had a banner quarter, and and every month sets new records. Uh, yeah, obviously the the brick and mortar stores are are in terrible shape, and the malls are in terrible shape. Uh, but online is doing great. Restaurants. Obviously, they have trouble uh, reopening uh, in many places. Indoors, outdoor seating is available, um, and so these things uh, are, are, in terms of retail sales, is doing good. Uh, some of the categories of retail sales, anything having to do with home improvement, um, with uh, uh, yeah, anything with online, uh, with uh, tech equipment that you need at home to work from home. Uh, those kinds of things are, are just booming and supplies can keep up. Uh, yeah, we have, including desks and things like that, uh, shelves and electronics and all kinds of stuff that people use to, to learn at home and to, uh, um, yeah, to work at home. And, and so this has shifted everything around. Uh, on the other hand, and, and there's another thing that has happened, you know, there, there, uh, we have big, uh, mortgage forbearance programs now and, and, uh, Eviction bans on uh, for renters, and and so uh, a lot of some of the people, maybe seven percent of our mortgages, roughly, and and we don't really know for sure how many, but a, uh, some percentage of renters have stopped making housing payments, and they're spending those now on on things um, uh, that they want to buy or that they need to buy. So uh, this is also a form of uh, spending, and it's not really a stimulus in that sense, but it is because it's, they're borrowing money. They're not getting money, but they're borrowing money from the future. They're borrowing from landlords, and they're borrowing from uh, mortgage funders uh, to spend on uh, merchandise and services now. In that sense, uh, these things have, have uh, uh, pushed up uh, consumer spending. On the other hand, uh, rental payments obviously are part of consumer spending, and so if you stop making the rental payment, uh, in theory, uh, that should lower uh, the the housing spending uh, uh, in, in in the consumer spending category. Interest expense on mortgages that also goes into 
uh, uh, consumer spending as to to other uh, mortgage related things. So uh, there is a drawback on that, and and uh, on the consumer spending side, or if you don't spend uh, your real money, in theory, it should lower. Uh, consumer spending, but we haven't seen those numbers yet. So the third quarter uh, GDP numbers will will give us more uh, insight into how that's working out. But in terms of retail spending, um, <laughs> you know, it's hot. And uh, I just now uh, get, looking some data of containers coming in uh, on the west coast of the United States, and and there's a huge uh, a flow of containers now coming in as retailers are stocking up. Uh, for for the holiday sales and also trying to replenish their uh, their supplies, uh, we're talking about online retailers. You know, brick and mortar retailers has gotten crushed, but online retail is really hot. And and, uh, and brick and mortar retailers, that, I mean, there's some exceptions, and and uh, including uh, uh, food stores and and uh, grocery stores, and supermarkets, and and particularly uh, home improvement stores. And uh, even though they have switched to online, uh, some a big part of the purchase to online as well, but they're all doing great business. So uh, in that sense, you know, consumers are spending, and obviously uh, since in the United States, a lot of uh, merchandise that consumers buy uh, is manufactured overseas. It is actually a stimulus for uh, for uh, manufacturers overseas, and that includes uh, China and other countries in Asia, but also in in Europe and in Mexico particularly. So uh, uh, we see some of that, the import state now coming in. Uh, so, yeah, in, in that sense, uh, we have paid a, uh, we meaning the taxpayers, the government, have paid a huge amount of money to consumers via all kinds of programs. And uh, this money is getting spent. Uh, there can be a case made that it was overdone because we didn't really need to uh, hit new records in retail spending. I mean, that was really needed. We just didn't want it to collapse. Uh, so, um, you know, and that, I think, uh, is in part uh, a reason why the next stimulus pack- package is in serious trouble in Congress because they're looking at this data, too, and I think, we really don't need to stimulate imports from China. You know, this is what consumers are buying. And so uh, we need to rethink this a little bit. And and, um, and so when we look at the data, uh, on one side of the economy, this stimulus money has gotten spent. We're also, uh, yeah, we've seen uh, there's an auto sales. Auto sales numbers are down, but the high end is doing really well. So the expensive cars flying uh uh, off a lot, and uh, expensive uh, trucks and SUVs, particularly pickups. Um, you know, their dealers are having a hard time uh, keeping enough inventory. And even though overall sales are still down by about twenty percent, you know, it's, it's the expensive stuff that's going out. And uh, uh, so, it, it, uh, it definitely there are certain parts of the economy that are that are getting pretty heavily stimulated. We'll have more with Wolf Richter right after this. Engineer Gold Mines is focused on the exploration and development of the historic high-grade Engineer Gold Mine situated 32 kilometers southwest of Atlin, British Columbia. Engineer Gold Mines is fully permitted for surface and underground exploration with the drill program now underway. Engineer Gold Mines Limited trades on the TSX Venture Exchange symbol EAU. For more information, please visit us at engineergoldmines.com. Value from success, growth, and discovery. Golden Arrow Resources is a well-funded gold copper exploration company with proven management and prospective properties in Chile, Argentina, and Paraguay. Golden Arrow trades on the Toronto Venture Exchange, symbol GRG, on Frankfurt, symbol G6A, and the OTCQB, symbol GARWF. For more information, visit us at goldenarrowresources.com or call Sean at 778-686-0135. Welcome back. We're speaking with Wolf Richter. How is the housing market doing in the U.S.? So we have seen uh, what we're now starting to call a land uh, rush. <laughs> uh, where uh, people in cities, in big cities, are uh, leaving and it may be renters in big cities, or they, they may own homes. 
and uh, they're moving, they're trying to move into the suburbs, into the outer lying reaches. And this is a a, uh, a big movement right now in, in New York City and in, in on the West Coast in San Francisco and some other places. And uh, so we see a, a a surge in house prices uh, in in those areas. And uh, on the other hand, like in San Francisco, condo sales are in real trouble. And in San Francisco in general, and there's now a huge amount of inventory on the market, record-breaking amount of inventory. And uh, sales are doing okay-ish, nothing special, but uh, people are really trying to sell. And a lot of those people that are trying to sell uh, are investors, so the condo, uh, units, uh, 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 many of them are investor owned. There may be a Airbnb unit and it may be, uh, investors from overseas that just bought it for price appreciation. And, uh, in, in, in terms of houses in San Francisco, we don't have that feature for housing stock, single family houses, but, uh, they're behaving slightly more normally even though there's lots of supply on the market now too. And I get the impression that here in San Francisco, people have already left and they have already bought somewhere else, and they're now trying to sell the home here in San Francisco. Uh, and if it's investment property, they're just trying to unload uh, an albatross. You know, we see if you have an Airbnb unit uh, right now, it's really hard uh, to keep uh, keep guests. You know, there's just not a lot of tourism, and um, so looking at some major pressure points and and we can we can see that in the numbers in San Francisco right now but that's kind of the exception if you look in the outer lying areas of the bay area uh there's fairly strong housing demand and and in some areas uh, very strong demand uh of course now that we have the wildfire you know <laughs> everything just gets 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 shuffled around but uh before we had the wildfire that's that's what we saw in other parts of the country, in the suburbs, you know, there, there, there has been a very strong price appreciation since the pandemic. Uh, I don't know how long that can last. Uh, some of it is pretty ridiculous. Um, and, and some of that ex- exodus from the cities will probably end or reverse and people just <laughs> yeah, lived in New York City for 10, 15 years and suddenly they're living in some this suburb. That's a change, a big cultural change in the, and not everybody may, may like that. So there, there'll be some kind of a, a backlash on, on, on that, I think. Um, and rent, rent on the, uh, uh, pressure in, in some of our cities. Uh, San Francisco rents have already plunged over the last few months. We've been talking about 20%. I mean, we're talking big numbers here. And, uh, in, same thing in New York. The vacancies are now, uh, rising as people are moving out. Uh, people are, younger people are moving back home. You know, they, they came to the Bay Area to work for Google or whoever. And, and, um, now it's work from home. So they moved back to St. Louis. Or wherever, and, and they're working from there. They don't have to pay four, five thousand dollars a month in rent uh, uh, to work. And so um, there is now there are a lot of high-rise apartment buildings that are uh, that are now under stress, and um, and particularly high-rise buildings because people don't really want to be on an elevator with a bunch of other people. And uh, the same thing with condo buildings in in, in these big cities. So uh, yeah, we have this. This, uh, uh, it's not called a K-shaped recovery. You know, we have one part, uh, where there's a very strong recovery, especially on the higher end, and that's in the housing market. So we see, uh, uh, a lot of buying going on, a lot of price increases in some parts, and we see, uh, a lot of pressures in other parts. And, and the, the pressure part includes record amount of mortgages that are now delinquent. So that's the lower end of the market. Uh, these mortgages have not come, uh, yeah, they, they, they've been put now in forbearance. It's so how banks have agreed not to foreclose on the home and they're gonna, they're gonna be in forbearance for a few months. Well, forbearance means a deferral of payments. Uh, uh, so, yeah, they don't have to sell the home at this point. And those homes are not coming on the market yet. But these, these mortgages are delinquent and maybe they can be cured and maybe they cannot be cured. But that's, that's a, uh, we had a record spike of that already. So, yeah, this is the K recovery we now have. Part of the housing market is really uh, stressed, including on uh, uh, mortgage delinquencies and on uh, larger apartment buildings in some of the major cities. 
and other parts of the housing market are just booming, you know, land rush, you know, it's just people trying to grab whatever they can. And uh, we've seen that in other parts of the uh, uh, pandemic economy. We have uh, uh, in many places, you know, a, a complete shuffling around of the dynamics where weird things are happening. We have weird pressure points we've never seen before. And uh, on, on both sides of the, of the fence, at, at, uh, at some point, some more, you know, prices are just going way out of whack. And on the other end, there you see defaults and delinquencies and you see a certain part of that, of that breaking down. And uh, that's our housing market right now. Yeah, it's a K recovery. Part of it is doing really, really well. And uh, part of it is under enormous stress we'll have more with will frichter right after this media recognition from bloomberg writers recycling trade publications patented process for 100 percent recovery of critical metals including cobalt lithium nickel manganese aluminum american manganese is focused on recycling lithium ion batteries for electric vehicles american manganese trades on the tsx Venture, amy the u.s amyzf and frankfurt 2 a.m for more information visit americanmanganeseinc.com or phone me larry ray at 778-574-4444 Don't miss out. Stay informed. Receive the HowStreet.com weekly recap with thought-provoking podcasts, radio, and articles delivered to your inbox. Sign up for the HowStreet.com weekly recap on our homepage at HowStreet.com. Welcome back. We're speaking with Wolf Richter. Wolf, what's the Baltic Dry Index doing, the amount of shipping bringing goods uh, across our oceans uh, to all the continents? Well, in terms of the shipping, so the the uh, container shipments, um, yeah, the the Baltic Dry Index is is uh, for uh, dry goods, so dry commodities, uh, and that could be coal or gravel and that kind of stuff. Yeah, um, but in terms of shipping of uh, 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 consumer goods and, and industrial goods, uh, uh, in, uh, we're looking at containers and uh, especially carriers. And uh, containers arriving on the West Coast are now uh, expected to hit records. Um, and that's, yeah, to, to, to refill supply chain, stock shelves, and get ready for holiday shopping season. And retailers are expecting uh, more stimulus money for consumers. They may be wrong in that expectation. Uh, Congress just turned down a, a stimulus proposal today. And... and uh, <clears throat> It, uh, I don't know if we're going to, to get another stimulus package or not, but if we do, you know, uh, consumers are going to spend that money and, and retailers want to stock up for it. So we've seen a surge of orders. Uh, they're trying to restock, and, and so now the containers are arriving, and, and uh, shipping rates for containers often have hit record highs. The, even the trucking market is starting to recover. Uh, so on, on the good side, you know, the, the supply chains are, are are starting to be realigned and functioning and and um, you know and, and obviously we can have another downturn in consumer spending. We had a lot of that stimulus money uh, uh, disappear. Uh, we had an extra six hundred dollars a week uh, in unemployment benefits uh, for everybody that got unemployment benefits. That was just on top of it. Uh, that expired at the end of July. It was replaced by a four or five week long program of three hundred dollars for some people, three hundred dollars a week. Uh, that may expire here at the end of the month, early October. And uh, there's no stimulus check now uh, being uh, <laughs> being planned at this point. So uh, you know, consumers. May, and we have we just got the new numbers on unemployment. You know, today we have twenty nine oh, twenty. Oh, 29.6 million people on unemployment benefits. You know, that's a huge number of people that are claiming unemployment benefits. So, uh, you yeah, know, this may, consumer spending on the retail goods may, may turn sap again on it. But at this point, retailers are definitely stocking up and, and we can see that in the container numbers. I mean, they're, uh, yeah, the, the, the freight rates have shot higher. Uh, the ocean going freight rates for containers. Um, Obviously, shipping companies in April and May have cut back the capacities on the capacity constraints. Um, and freight rates uh, have come up also. And, and uh, 
uh, on the import side, it, it looks like, you know, there, there is a fairly strong recovery going on. Are there two different recoveries, uh, people who kept their jobs and were able to work from home and the people who lost their jobs, those in the service sector, and uh, how will this affect the U.S. economy in the long run? Yeah, we're definitely seeing that, and that's the K-shaped recovery. Uh, lots of well-paid jobs uh, were switched to work from home, so these people uh, retain their jobs. Uh, We've also seen enormous uh, stock market gains. So for the people that have significant amounts in the stock market, whether or not they lost their jobs, uh, you know, that was a huge boost. And they spent some of this money, too. Uh, yeah, we have seen uh, gains in the house, price gains in the housing market. So people who own an expensive home feel comforted by that, and, and they can spend money. Um, on the other hand, uh, yeah, a lot of the people in lower-end service jobs lost their jobs in uh, March and April and, and May as well. And uh, many of them are being hired back. So these are retailers, restaurants, uh, uh, the hotel operations, and so forth, uh, some amusement parks. Uh, they have started hiring back people in fairly large numbers. And uh, uh, so we've, we've seen those people return to work. Um, and then there were other companies... Uh, Anything having to do with online, so fulfillment centers, uh, transportation, uh, and so forth, uh, they have been hiring like crazy for months because they have a, uh, yeah, their, their business jumped 50%. Yeah. Some retailers have reported 200% jump in, uh, their e-commerce business. So they have to hire people to do that, even as they shut down their, the stores, the physical stores, they went through a hiring process, an enormous hiring process in their fulfillment centers and in, in their, their, uh, uh, in their shipment, uh, processes. And uh, so, and these are lower paid jobs now, but so we've, we've saw, we saw the implosion of that, that end of the job market in, in, uh, March, April, and May, and that has started to come back. So now what we're seeing is a second wave of job losses. And these are the companies that vowed during early phase of the pandemic that they wouldn't lay off people for a while. And these are the tech companies and these are, uh, yeah, big companies, uh, big corporations that hung on to their employees and the banks, yeah, it was Fargo and, and others, uh, that vowed to hang on to their employees for the first few months of the pandemic. And now that that period is over and they're starting to let people go. And now these are higher paid jobs that are, uh, being lost and the layoff announcements are, that keep coming out and we're seeing them. Uh, October 1st, we had, that's a big date in the United States because that's when, uh, uh, the limit expires for uh, the bailout packages that the airlines got that couldn't lay off people, uh, through September because they accepted, uh, uh, $25 billion in grants from the government. And uh, on October 1st, they can lay off people. They've already gotten rid of a, a lot of employees by offering them voluntary buyouts, early retirements, and that kind of stuff. And uh, so whoever they still need to get rid of, uh, as of October 1st, they're free to do that. And, uh, and so we will see that. So we have now a second wave of layoffs that are uh, more damaging to the economy than that they, they're hitting um uh, higher paid employees and uh so more spending power and and uh and the lower paid uh workers that had been let off many of them are are getting rehired and uh so that's that's the process today was the second week in a row we we saw a deterioration in the unemployment numbers on uh, on in terms of unemployment claims um, so we're kind of stuck right now in in this situation where, uh, you know, at one end, it has been completely terrible. The labor market completely collapsed, and it's come back somewhat. And on the other hand, and uh, the labor market didn't really uh, collapse. I mean, it had, there was some weakness in it, but it is now uh, showing greater weakness. And... Um, <laughs> You know, it's split in two, and, and, but it's not creeping higher, and, and we'll have to 
have to see how that turns out. I mean, October 1st is going to be a, a big day, and, and, and there's some other strange dates like that coming up, or, or companies that are just waiting for something, for a calendar date or for something else. And, and, uh, um, but at this point, we're, we're sort of hung up on an employment situation that refuses to, to get better. That's essentially what we're looking at. Well, thank you so much for chatting with us, and I hope the forest fire situation clears up pretty soon. Thank you, Jim. Yeah, we're all hoping about those forest fires. My guest has been Wolf Richter, publisher of WolfStreet.com. He was speaking to us from a very smoky San Francisco. If you have any questions for Wolf or any of our other guests, you can send them to info at HowStreet.com. Find us on Twitter at HowStreet. Our YouTube channel is Talk Digital Network. We're also on Facebook. I'm Jim Goddard. Thank you for listening. Comments made on HowStreet.com radio are an expression of opinion only and should not be construed in any matter whatsoever as recommendations to buy or sell any financial instrument at any time. Available online at TalkDigitalNetwork.com. HowStreet.com radio is a production of HowStreet Media Incorporated.